In this video, I'm going to go through how I work with uh, raw conversion in Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw. Lightroom users will find very similar controls, so this applies for them also. This is the image as um, it comes up by default, and it's not what I want. And this is the image that I'm actually going to uh, choose in the end. So let's go through how I get there. Uh, so this is the, the final set of settings, and I'm, let's go through each one, and I'll explain what I've done. Uh, first of all, there's profile, also known as camera profile. And you can choose a whole bunch of things here. And what I like to do is choose the one that gets me closest to uh, what I'm going to like the best. So let's, let's go back and put it, reset it to default. And I play around with these, and I found that Adobe Landscape gives me a little more contrast and color. I um, wasn't sure, but I went with that one, even though I typically don't. The next thing is color temperature and tint. And this is a tricky one, because sometimes you're not after correct, you're after what looks good. And furthermore, in unusual lighting, the tint that you might use in sunlight could be very different for other conditions, or even with a polarizer or even from close range to far, as I've found. If you go green in the distance, the more blue there is. So there's no right answer. You kind of have to go with what, what looks good. And um, I'm going to reset that to open. could remind myself I decided 50-50 was the right color temperature and the right tint was 22. Uh, but the default was 15, which is actually pretty greenish. If you measure the snow, it's... It's like five points green, which is way too green. I went with 22 as a middle ground. It turns out that 26 actually neutralizes the snow, but to my eyes tends to make the rest of it look a little too magenta. So that's a case where you can pick something that looks right for one part of the scene, but not another. And if you neutralize snow, it just may not work out right. So I went with 22. Now, as far as exposure, I've done a point 0.33 stop here, push here. If we take that out, you can see it darkens. So this is about the right amount. I look at my highlight indicator, which I've turned on here. If I put in, say, a one, one stop push, you can see it's way too bright. It's actually not blown out, but it's too bright, so we don't want that. I don't you generally work with contrast highlight. Uh, I do work with highlights and shadows, but I'm not going to do it here because I don't really need to control those too much. Whites, I typically leave around 20. 40 can look a little harsh and start to blow out whites. Blacks, I rarely use unless I've really boosted the shadows. Moving down to optics, I generally leave remove chromatic aberration on. And uh, sometimes it can correct things that the built-in corrections don't get. Sometimes it can actually make it worse. So you want to pay attention there. I, I turn on use profile corrections in this case, I don't want distortion correction, and I don't want vignetting correction uh, for various reasons. Uh, I may explain those in another video. Um, moving down to detail, the default sharpening is pretty poor. I don't like it at all. For an F8 or F9 exposure, I'll use 4808-7020 up at F8 or F9. Anything, anything through 5.6, I'll use 45.0.7. Some cameras require adjusting that down a bit, but that's a good starting point. It would be a 45, 0 0.7, 70, 20. Now, then there's um, uh, noise reduction. I don't use this anymore because I'll instead go and right click and say enhance. And enhance, I found, come on, Adobe, there we go. I like to use denoise at 10 with uh, enhanced raw details. You can turn off the denoise and just do raw details, but I found that a denoise of 10 is very helpful in actually enhancing details even above and beyond what raw details does. I don't like much more than that because it starts to degrade detail in some cases. I'm not going to enhance it this time, but usually I'll enhance it and then do what we're doing here on the enhanced one. Although I, I, I usually finish this up, this file up, then enhance it so that the same settings apply. I'm going to cancel out of there, so assume we're using the enhanced one. Uh, furthermore, if you're doing focus stacking, 
the small amount of noise reduction with um, AI denoise actually improves the stack because you get rid of like random noise that tends to pollute your stacking algorithms idea of what's sharp and not sharp. All right, moving further down, we've got effects. Um, I usually use a clarity of 10 and just leave it there. Dehaze is a very useful and very tricky control, however. Let's take that dehaze out, and you'll see that we see a, a flatter image that's just, you know, it's just not that contrasty. It's slightly hazy. And in fact, when I was looking at this thing, it looked pretty contrasty. And if anything, that dehaze of 20 there is maybe less contrasty and less impressive than what I saw by eye. But I chose 20. And you can go to things like 50, and now you start to get very aggressively postcardy, as I call it. But it has its uses at times, particularly if you're going to do black and white. Anyway, I chose 20 for this image. The other things I don't tend to use very much, there's this new lens blur thing. Uh, it doesn't really, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any opinion on that yet. Um, color mixer is very helpful for uh, certain things, like if you want to control sky, maybe you want to pull the blues down. That is useful, but very tricky and sensitive, so use it with care. Um, so I don't use it too much. Um, calibration is just the version, you, nothing to do there. Curve, I rarely use here, but can be useful con for, for controlling highlights and shadows, but it's more complicated. Uh, and that's, in a nutshell, is how I go through an image and um, alter the parameters. But how do I actually go about that? I would say that um, you have to develop a knack for this. And if you're worried, if you, if you think it looks really good, maybe back it off a little bit. Don't go quite so heavy. You might choose to correct vignetting or not. In this case, if I correct vignetting, 100, you'll see it lightens up all the corners. I don't like that effect in this case because those clouds in the upper right and upper left are now brighter and the drama is reduced. So by taking, by not correcting vignetting, you can see that the corners are darker, including the bottom corners, which I don't really want the bike bright, bright rocks in the dark corners. So sometimes I correct vignetting, sometimes I don't. It's going to depend on the scene. Um, before you do any of this, you might want to zoom in and just check your uh, sharpness. This is on a retina display, so I'll go even a little further. This image is uh, razor sharp out in the distance. Um, even in the 4K version of this video, you see it'll look sharp. But it's actually sharper on the original. There's our foreground. You can see it's not sharp. This is ultimately part of a focus stack, so the whole thing's going to be sharp near to far. So I don't try to assess sharpness on a retina display. That's another subject for another uh, video. And uh, anyway, when you're done with uh, your corrections there, I click Done, which saves out uh, an XMP file. You can then reopen the file. And I like to do it in multiple steps sometimes just to save what I've got because I can then make changes and uh, compare. So one trick you might want to know is suppose you want to say, well, gee, maybe I want to um, maybe I want to dehaze it, uh, let's say, 40. So let's go down here and do a dehaze of 40, a little darker, more dramatic. Now if I hold down the Option key on the keyboard, notice down here you'll see that the, it says Open Copy. So if I now do that, it will open a copy, appeared on the other screen here, um, but it won't change the settings in the, uh, in, in the, in the, 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 it won't change the settings. If I now open it again, you'll see the settings down here, dehaze is still at 20. I can open that, and now in Photoshop, I can layer those, and uh, let me uh, see if I can get the layers, window here. And now I can toggle on and off the um, these layers. And I can then directly compare very easily. Eh, do I like that effect? Do I not like that effect? If that was, if one's 20, that's 20, and this is 40, well, maybe I should try 30. And in that way you can kind of um, hone in on what your preferred look is. Uh, but to go back, I'm going to close that out. And just to go back uh, a, a little bit Close that out, open it up again. Um, the biggest and most important first thing you want to do is get the white balance right and, then, and choose your profile. Because by choosing your profile, you establish the overall look. Now let's go Provia, 
Okay, a little flatter. You can toggle between that. I like Provia, so we'll stick with that. Adobe Landscape versus Velvia. Uh, Velvia ha adds a tone that is like a purplish. I don't like that. So pick your. Try picking your um, your camera profile first, and it'll get you in the ballpark of what you liked. And you, you click this little guy, and it'll show you the Adobe ones, the camera matching ones. Some cameras have a lot, like Fujifilm has an excellent assortment. Some cameras have basically none or one. You know, Leica sucks that way, for example. There's various black and white and what they call artistic, which are mostly nasty looking ones. Anyway, you can once you when, once you have one of those, like you you can uh, right click on it and say um, add to favorites. Um, uh, let's see, like uh, Adobe Vivid. No, I already got it. My favorites, Adobe Neutral. Yeah, I can say add to favorites. So once you do that, it'll be uh, put um, into this uh, pop up list. So so that choosing that look is your very is your best step. That gets you in the ballpark. Um, and, and just get the white balance about right when you make that ballpark decision. Okay, so that's probably enough for this one. Um, give you an overall sense of how I proceed when I do that. I click done, and then you'll notice I've got multiple files here. I would then apply it to every file in this focus stack, uh, but that's a subject for another video.